Welcome to the program. Australian households installed a record 378,000 rooftop solar systems last year, but new research released exclusively to 7.30 shows some customers are deeply frustrated by problems with their solar rooftop systems. There are now calls for major changes amid concerns consumers aren't protected when things go wrong. This report from Consumer Affairs reporter Amy Bainbridge and producer Lucy Kent. Australia's rooftop solar revolution is unmatched by any other country. Solar is growing at a rate that you wouldn't have expected, particularly over the last 12 months. More than 2.7 million homes now have panels on the roof. But the switch to solar hasn't come easy for everyone. We're on a low tariff, so it's not going to be that far. We got our first power bill. There was minimal saving, if anything. So we basically just thought we'd been chipped. 26106 credit. In 2017, a solar salesman told Wayne and Sam Manette they could eliminate their electricity bill. It was around $12,000 through finance, um, and we had no reason to think it was going to be a problem. It's not an easy thing to research, especially for the layman. But their electricity bill went down less than $20 a quarter. Then in 2019, the local power network called to say the system wasn't feeding any electricity into the grid. I tried a few turn off, turn on, reset things, nothing happened. So then I rang the facilitator, nowhere to be found. I googled the maker of the inverter, nowhere to be found. I was getting angry, Wayne's getting angry. And I'm suggesting to Wayne, ring up so-and-so, and he says, I've had enough. The inverter, the crucial piece of technology that converts solar energy to electricity to be used in the home, had failed. Hey, Wayne. Kevin, how you going, mate? Good to see you again. Good to see you too, bud. Thought we'd come and check out the system, see how it's working. I decided to call someone and just get these solar panels off my roof. I don't have anything to do with it whatsoever. All right. We'll go back to how we had it, and I'll pay the loan off and just consider it as a lesson learned. You know, one of the problems that we had last time was that... Local installer Kevin Schaefer convinced Wayne he could fix the system by replacing the inverter and making other modifications. The inverter had been installed on a west wall um, in direct sunlight, um, so it had been exposed to the, to the sun and the heat and it failed due to that. Uh, and again, that's a, a poor installation practice. Everything's holding up well up yeah. there. Kevin Schaefer believes the training for installers isn't adequate. Just make sure there's no debris in another... You really need to have spent time working in the industry with people who have knowledge and experience to get to a point where you can then go ahead and do a, a solar installation on your own or with your own team. There's a, a range of training uh, opportunities that installers can take up. Um, the, the question of whether we could um, uh, require more training before um, installers are approved it is one that we're open to having. Victoria's Energy and Water Ombudsman Cynthia Gabert is worried solar customers aren't properly protected. Australian consumer law, the general protections, work really well for products. But solar and people's engagement with solar is much more about the service. The retail, the solar retailer, the solar installers, your registered electrical contracts, as well as a product. The problem is she's powerless to deal with almost a third of the complaints she receives because they fall outside her jurisdiction, which is limited to traditional power companies. We're only able to deal with complaints about members of the Energy and Water Ombudsman scheme. It is the more traditional part of the market, so not the new energy technology, not the new players in the energy market. She launched an investigation with the help of the Australian National University, interviewing people across the country. There were some people that were really positive about their experience, um, but there was a high level of frustration that when things went wrong, it was too hard to get it fixed. The consumer watchdog says it too is receiving a steady flow of complaints about solar, almost 500 in the first half of this year. The big ones really are misleading representations about what you're actually purchasing, what value you're going to get from it, as well as real concerns around faulty installations. Research the company that you're buying your system from. Make sure they're an approved solar retailer. If something does go wrong, you can bring your concern to Clean Energy Council. 
Last year, the federal government announced a rooftop solar sector review to look at a range of issues, including the accreditation process for installers and protecting consumers from inappropriate sales and poor installations. That review is yet to be released. The Minister Responsible, Angus Taylor, declined 7.30's request for an interview. We welcome initiatives by governments to raise the bar on standards for solar because we know that in order to have a 100% renewable grid, we have to keep on improving the standards for solar. The research suggests a compensation scheme of last resort for consumers left out of pocket when installations go wrong and expanding the Ombudsman's jurisdiction. We need a consumer protection framework that is nimble enough to be able to adapt to the changes in the market. There was not a one-stop shop for me to go to and get the whole issue resolved. I had to learn about the system and I shouldn't have to know so much about all of that in order to get renewable energy. Adelaide music student Tricia Drioli sees herself as a champion of renewable energy, but she's had plenty of challenges with her system. Signing a contract deposit on a system that was inexpensive but never arrived, signing off on a top of the range system which a couple of years later broke down, really bad customer service when the breakdown did occur, incorrect installation of the battery. She found herself dealing with a complicated web of retailers, wholesalers and regulators. When she signed up to be part of a virtual power plant to share energy between households, her battery wasn't installed properly and there were delays in receiving her rebate for feeding electricity into the grid. As a consumer you just feel like you're an annoyance because we're, we're generators as well, so we're part of the picture. But we're made to feel like we're an annoying part of the picture because the existing system doesn't accommodate us very well. Simply Energy, which ran the system, says it's since reimbursed Ms Drioli for the delay and told 7.30, the success of our virtual power plant program relies on coordination between Simply Energy, networks, installers, electricians and customers, and delays sometimes do happen. The challenge is with a number of different um, general consumer law protections is consumers have to one pay to go to the VCAT or the equivalent um, civil and administrative tribunals in other states. The process itself isn't so free which is one of the fundamentals of um, an ombudsman scheme. Some consumers have taken their grievances to state tribunals. If you ask my wife, <laughs> it'd be maybe different. She asked me to let it go. I don't know many how many times. She asked me to let it go. Um, but I couldn't. See these indentations here. Michael Hoffman was awarded $20,000 by the New South Wales Civil and Administrative Tribunal after he took on retailer Sunboost over damage to his shed roof during the installation. You can see the bend in it. It was a big decision, to, um, both from a monetary point of view, because you've got to start paying for all these claims for uh, through ASIC to get the documents. You got to, it's all the administration fees, etc., etc. So their costs. Plus, I wasn't in good health. In a statement, Bell Solar, the parent company of Sunboost, told 7.30 it acknowledges regrettable problems with Mr Hoffman's installation and that the company didn't know the subcontractor did not perform the task himself or appropriately supervised the site. The company says it's since overhauled its processes. So we had to move it to here. In April, New South Wales Fair Trading refused to renew Bell Solar's electrical contractor licence after it received 255 inquiries and complaints about the company. Bell Solar has appealed that decision and can still trade while the State Tribunal decides its fate. The company says it's still working with New South Wales Fair Trading to resolve the licence matter and it's confident it will ultimately be renewed. Australians installed three gigawatts of rooftop solar last year and the Victorian Ombudsman says now is the time to strengthen consumer protections. 
It is a concern for, for all of us to ensure that we've got adequate coverage of all the energy related issues that customers should be able to complain about. Do your homework, I'm doing obviously. Research, yes. Do your research, but even then it's hard because you don't know what to look for. Despite the difficulties, I think this is a new emerging technology and I would really strongly encourage people to join in. Late this evening, the Energy Minister, Angus Taylor, released a statement which you can read on our website. And if you've, if you've had problems with your solar rooftop installation that you're willing to share, drop us a line at 7.30 at abc.net.au.